Welcome back, Agiteers. It's another beautiful day here in Michigan. Weather is looking really good, so uh, I thought I'd take some time, sit out on the deck, and chat with you um, about why I can't or haven't been able to make as many videos lately as normal. Anyway, first thing, you see that shed back there? Uh, that thing needed a new roof, so some family members came over and helped my wife and I out, and we were able to get this new roof put on and it kind of broke the budget because all the wood needed to be replaced it was rotted out as I understand it the sheds about 40 to 50 years old but still in great shape next on the list is to paint it so my mother-in-law and my wife are gonna paint it and make it look all pretty but anyway that's not what I'm here to talk to you about but that is why I haven't been putting out videos for the last couple days anyway but Here's what's going on. So some of you may know that I have a little device in my heart. The acronym for it is an ICD or internal cardiac device. And I've now had one since 2010. I actually got a new one last October. So I've got my new one in and thankfully I haven't been shocked so this device basically is responsible for two different things first thing is it's a little bit windy here and I'm afraid my umbrella is gonna take off which wouldn't be too cool so I'm holding my umbrella down hopefully the wind isn't driving the mic crazy uh, but anyway the one thing the device can do is shock me if my heart stops or has a problem and can't maintain a regular beat that would be like if it was really bad the other thing it can do is pace my heart which it does do uh, the percentage goes up you know every year as my heart needs more and more help so at this point the last I heard and this was a year or two ago it was at about 20 percent pacing so it basically cuts in when my heart can't keep a normal rhythm and paces it so that it does I do not notice it so the way the device is designed, it actually works quite well. I mean, it's just there, it helps me out. Um, I've had many people ask me, have you ever been shocked? I have. The first time I had surgery uh, to get the original device in, they tested it four times and I was in a so-called twilight sleep, but let me tell you, there was no twilight sleep going on. I couldn't rest at all. As a matter of fact, I felt all the pain of the surgery and the cutting and all that stuff. So it was quite a trip and very, very uncomfortable. And I kept telling the nurse I was in pain and she would lift up the, there was like a shroud over my head so I wouldn't get any infection into, you know, the cut or the wound. And, uh, so she kept asking me, are you in pain? I said, yeah. But anyway, they did shock me four times. Uh, the doctor seemed to think I would forget about it because of the twilight medicine, but I never did forget about it. But in all honesty, I'd rather have felt it than not because now I know what it's like. So um, I'm not as afraid to do stuff and go out and try things. You know, I wouldn't want to get shocked and I don't want to experience that, but it's going to be inevitable. The heart condition I have is called dilated cardiomyopathy, and it's a fancy word for we don't know why your heart is enlarging or getting weaker and weaker. The enlargement is a response to my heart weakening. And uh, my brother had the same disease and they again they couldn't figure out why they thought maybe a genetic issue because I did have an uncle who passed away from sudden cardiac death so it is possible that um, you know we inherited something but my brother passed away a while ago in 2012 he was 10 years older than me and he also had a device uh, he had a couple of different devices actually so there is some likelihood that it's a familial disease my blood work is very good I could stand to lose a little bit of weight and that would certainly help my heart out <clears throat> so I've been talking with the doctor my weight was down a couple years ago and 
unfortunately, I, and some of you already know, I broke my leg last summer in June on my way to the laundry room to do the laundry. <laughs> so uh, uh, that was quite embarrassing, and it really messed things up. I ended up having to get a rod put in my leg, and as a result of the injury, I did end up with blood clots in my leg, and unfortunately, they traveled to my lungs, and as a result of all of that, it caused problems with my heart, as you can imagine. It antagonized it, and what they do is they measure the heart's healthiness by one the enlargement so they can tell how large the heart is whether it's still healthy or not the other thing is they have a test called the ejection fraction and basically what this is is the percentage of blood the heart is able to pump out every time it it, it contracts and an, a healthy heart should be at 65 percent or higher and as you can imagine you know athletes probably have even higher percentages of ejection fraction <clears throat> at any rate um, before I injured myself uh, falling down the stairs my ejection fraction was actually pretty good it was in decline so as each year goes by you know it, it gets lower and lower uh, but three or four years ago my ejection fraction was about 45 percent with the treatment the medicine the device and so on but after that accident uh, because of the blood clots and the uh, embolisms in my chest pulmonary embolisms uh, my ejection fraction dropped to 30%. So actually it's a little bit less than that at this point. So um, there's stages. Stage one is when I initially was diagnosed back in 2010. It basically means you're not experiencing symptoms. Maybe if you're under heavy, heavy duress, working out really hard, but you really wouldn't equate it to being a heart difficulty. Stage two is symptoms you're symptomatic when you're doing um, exercise and stage three is you're symptomatic with daily activities and it's not like it's you know stage three is the same through this whole thing it's it's progressive you know it just kind of gets worse and worse and worse stage four is um, where you're symptomatic even at rest and I'm like in between there so there's a variety of symptoms the two that are hardest to deal with one is well there's lots of symptoms but the two that are on top of the list number one is um, when I am doing something which is probably trivial you know like walking at a, a moderate to fast pace here comes a jet I'm not going to edit this video, so let's give it a second. I live by an airport. It's a small airport, so the good thing is when I want to fly, I can. All right. So, um, gosh, where were we? Ah, yeah, the symptoms. So, um, it makes it harder to do things and for some reason um, breathing is just very difficult in especially high humidity high heat situations and yesterday we were cleaning up all the stuff around the shed there and I sounded like I was running up stairs like like I was running up a hundred flight of stairs nonstop as fast as I could go that's kind of what it feels like when I'm doing light to moderate activities. So how do I deal with it? Well, I just slow my pace a little bit and keep doing things. Let myself breathe. Um, you know, don't push too hard too fast because some of the medicines I have keeps my blood pressure way down and tries to smooth out my heart rate so I could pass out. Um, I, At this point, doubt I would 
have a heart attack, what with the device and all, but I could get shocked and pass out and all that, and that's not something I really want to go through if I don't have to. Um, the other symptom is the one that I hate most. So if I take a day and do a lot of aggressive activities, like I spent several hours working on the shed, cleaning up, you know, putting things back, um, tools and such, uh, you know, and it, it stresses my heart and I'm working hard, which is also good for my heart. So sitting around is definitely not an option, okay? And uh, so I do all this stuff and the next day I have this fatigue that is just awful. I mean, I'm fine if I get a nice high dose of sleep. Um, so if I sleep 8 to 10 hours, I'm usually okay. But it takes about two of those days of good quality sleep for me to recover and feel good and have my heart be normal um, as far as the rhythm and that feeling of fatigue and exhaustion. So you got to imagine, you know, like you, as you're working and doing things, your muscles are working, you build up a lot of waste in your system, and my heart just is really tired. It's only pumping at about a third of what a normal human heart is capable of. So it's just exhausting for my body. So rest is like critical, just as critical as exercise. I have to keep that up. So I try to stay active every day and do stuff. But I overdid it the last couple of days. So it cost me. Um, so those are the two main symptoms. And they really uh, make it difficult. So like today, you know, I'm like, you know, Mark, you got to get up. You need to get a video shot. You need to get it edited down and upload it and now I don't know how many of you do YouTube videos or shoot videos but it's not as easy as it sounds the last video I released for example had some uh, uh, just general problems you know there's always some kind of problem but when I edited it I had separate audio and it was out of sync so I had to go back and fix that and re-upload it and so on and you know, a video to actually shoot the whole thing, you know, including thinking up what is going to be shot, how it's going to be done, all that stuff, it takes some time. So today I was like, you know, I'm not up for it. I am not up for doing a video today. And I actually feel a little guilty because I do have a couple of people on my Patreon and I'm seriously considering canceling it because I don't want to say I'm going to do something, you know, like make a video every other day, for example, and not be able to do it. So I am considering getting rid of the Patreon. But um, so what am I doing about my heart disease now? Well, one thing is trying to eat healthier, um, working on losing weight, uh, taking care of myself. I don't drink any alcohol or anything like that. I am something now called the Heart Failure Clinic, and what they do at my doctor's office, <coughs> excuse me, is in this Heart Failure Clinic, instead of waiting, you know, several months to see your heart doctor and going maybe two or three times a year, since the symptoms are more acute and they come on quickly, and there's a variety of them, I haven't even talked about the heart arrhythmias, which are nasty nasty buggers. Um, with this clinic, uh, if I call, they can usually get me in within a day. And they also see me every two weeks to help me moderate my medications and help me um, understand why I'm having the symptoms and how I can best uh, ameliorate those symptoms or work around them. Um, and, and help me understand why I'm having the symptoms so I don't get too freaked out. So about every two weeks, uh, for a little while, once a week I was going, it includes blood tests and analysis and all that stuff. You get like personal um, uh, different treatments. Like for example, the last time I went, I got to have a pharmacist come in and explain to me every single medicine I'm on, exactly how it works, what it does for me, why I'm taking it, how long I'll be taking it, 
and so on and so forth and that was really helpful for me <coughs> oh, man so um, that heart clinic the heart failure clinic they call it HFC is is definitely something that has made it better for me one of the things they did was put me on a medicine that is um, much much more aggressive and not only that excuse me I'm gonna do this again <clears throat> not only that they titrated me up to the highest dose which essentially means um, getting you to the highest dosage you can handle and my thinking was well we'll just save those higher doses for when my heart's really bad and they said in the clinic no we will make you take the medicine now because it's best for preserving what you have left you know the heart's the only muscle that never gets to rest think of it that way so it's not like it can take a break and heal like the other muscles do so um, they put me on a super high dose of this medicine and the result of that is that it makes me very 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 tired <laughs> and um, that's a fair trade for the increase in productivity and general performance physical performance that I didn't have a couple months ago so you know um, getting up is a real chore, but I just do it, you know, I make myself do it, and I get up and I get some things done. So, now that the weather's nicer, I'm trying to get outside as much as possible and be physical, because I've seen other family members in my family, uh, who shall remain nameless, who did not utilize you know what they had so they lost it and I've seen people in wheelchairs who couldn't even move five feet to get to the bathroom because they were so exhausted so I don't want to become like that and I tend to be a very active person now back to the video thing like I was saying uh, shooting a video it seems like it's trivial, you know, and, and I, w I wanted to do this video with my Windows 98 machine. I've got a new video card to put in it, and I have a network card I want to put in it. But I'm thinking, well, I've got to get the camera set up, got to get the lights set up. I have to get the system out, open, and after what I did yesterday, I'm thinking there's no way. I mean, I just can't do all that stuff and shoot it. So I thought... If I'm going to do that, usually what I do now is sh is shoot the video, work through all the shooting, then the next day edit it. And I suppose I could be a lot quicker and just, you know, throw the videos up there, but I, I don't like to do that. I like to edit out all the garbage and clean it up um, and make it presentable for you so you don't have to watch all the silly stuff. Now, some people say they like the longer videos, and I appreciate that, so... I do long form videos and I also do shorter videos because some people like the shorter videos. Um, matter of fact, the last video I did, uh, I definitely misled some folks in my why I'm getting rid of the MacBook Pro 2017 video, which I'm actually shooting on right now. And um, they were thinking that was the first thing I was going to talk about, but I didn't. So I kind of screwed that one up and I apologize about that. But at the same time, the video is only 13 minutes long, I think, or something like that. And I was trying to, you know, whenever I, I discuss a topic, give them the reasons, for example, in that video, why I wasn't getting rid of the MacBook Pro. And one of them was the keyboard. So I wanted to talk about it because I haven't had a keyboard problem with either this or my 2015 MacBook. So I talked about it. But anyway... I have to be more careful with titling and topic and so on and so forth and definitely make it more user friendly for my users. So I am listening to you. I'm definitely listening to you. Uh, that's about all I wanted to talk about. I just thought I'd tell you a little bit about myself and why there, you know, there may be times like this thing back here, the shed, uh, it wiped out three to four days of my week. And after that, you know, like today I'm just kind of tired. So 
that's why I'm shooting this video. So you can get a better idea and understand, you know, what it is that I do um, to work through my, you know, health issues and symptoms and try to keep a positive perspective and maintain a healthy lifestyle and do as much as I can do because I still have a lot I want to offer the world and so that's what the videos are for and I enjoy making them and I hope you enjoy watching them and hopefully you'll keep watching them so thank you again um, for watching if you got all the way to the end I did want to mention that although I don't make a huge amount of money from YouTube I am making some money from YouTube and it definitely helps helps out with the bottom line especially in the summer when I don't teach so thank you everybody for the views and for the subs and for in, you know coming around and watching the videos I was gonna say enjoy them but I don't even know some of you don't I've seen your comments most of your comments are very positive thank you but uh, again thank you for watching and I'm glad we got a chance to chat hopefully uh, you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time as usual on Fast Gadgets.